Well, Rangers are in a little bit of a different situation. They've had a very tough last couple of weeks. Philippe Clement clearly on his last legs. The Rangers reported core record revenue of 88.3 million, but net loss of 17.2 million pounds. Is there some significant financial challenges ahead uh, uh, along with those challenges on the pitch? Yes, there are. Uh, this, you know, those numbers do not make good reading for Rangers. Uh, the one ray of light, I suppose, from last weekend was that they won the semi-final. The, uh, the trouble is that's the light at the end of the tunnel, but the light could well be the train, which is Celtic again coming to them in a final. So I think you know, Rangers have got some serious issues. Um, we know that Celtic have got uh, serious you know, reserves in the bank right now. Rangers haven't, and yet they're the club that needs a rebuild right now in many ways. And so 1.7... I mean, that's probably about as much as it would take to get rid of Clement right now. Uh, so, look, Rangers have got serious issues, but it's got to be solved, as I keep saying, at boardroom level and investor level. This isn't, I don't think, football issues just yet. You've got to get to those first before you can start tinkering with football again. And Rangers only have £1.7 million pounds in the bank compared to Celtic's £77.2 million. Is this a sign of how big the financial gap is becoming? And could it just continue to grow considering what we're seeing happen on the pitch? Yes, this is exa exactly what shows up the, uh, the difference right now between both clubs. And that's why it's going to take a pretty dramatic rethink from Rangers. I mean, if I was interviewing for this chief executive position right now, I'd want to be putting forward a pretty you know, dramatic agenda of growth and innovation for Rangers to show how they're going to try and break into some new markets and really dominate things. It's going to take some radical thought. Uh, and that's what Rangers have not been able to do over the last period of time since, uh, I don't know, since back before even Stevie G's time. So look, they're a club that is in, in trouble. Uh, they've got a huge loyal fan base globally. They've got to find ways to get that motivated for them. But they're going to need to, to understand and trust and invest in a new board and a new ownership group. So that is something that's got to happen. They're a big club that a new investor should be looking at right now because there is big potential with Rangers. And we talk about all these financial issues. Do this translate to maybe a decision about how to handle Philippe Clement and finding a new manager and sticking with this manager? Or are those completely separate issues? And if the results continue to be going the way that they are, that they'll have to move on in order to flip away, flip around the financial issues, right? Because it's kind of a chicken or the egg situation. Well, I did think that they were going to make a move on Clement, and I just think that would be wrong right now. Uh, I don't think he's had the support that was uh, needed and required. I don't think he's got the quality of people on that board to back him properly. And if they were to deflect from them, by trying to put it all on Clement, that would be wrong. And as I say, for Rangers, even on the football side just now, uh, instability is the last thing they need. So they've got to keep their nerve and they've got to sort all of this out at the top. That's where it stinks. They've got to you know, get this sorted out at the top level with investment and a new board and a new owner if possible. So the whole thing is just uh, in a real state of flux. But it's an opportunity because in football, whenever there's crisis, that always means an opportunity for a potential buyer. And the SPFL accounts show it paid £33.7 million pounds to 42 Scottish clubs last season. Is this a drop in the ocean for money Rangers and Celtics need to compete in Europe? Like that, It's just nothing compared to what we're seeing in the Premier League. Uh, yes, it is. And the SPFL has been mismanaged for many years, in my opinion. Uh, I've had my time in there. I know that there was a deal they were offered recently that was similar to the CVC deal in La Liga that would have really changed the whole thing in Scottish football but it did seem that the board were incapable of understanding common sense. Uh, and so, look, there's a big problem in the way that Scottish football is governed. There should be more risk-taking. They've got to do better internationally with broadcast deals, etc. But to answer your question, yes, it's a very small amount. The league should be doing better than it is in terms of its European stature. I think it's still the greatest viewership per percentage of population, I think, of any of the leagues in Europe still. Uh, and so there is an interest, and Scottish football could be very attractive. And certainly with Hearts and Hibs getting new investment from outside, Aberdeen's resurgence, look, this can be a good product again. So they've got to do their best to get uh, some better money in for that, for that product. And for Celtic and Rangers, is there a part of it where maybe it's better for them to not have more money coming in through the Scottish 
uh, Football League because then every club is getting more money. And in these situations, Rangers and Celtics are, are obviously so far ahead of the rest of the clubs in terms of financial situations. Obviously, it's not ideal to have less money, but maybe it helps them continue their dominance in the league. No, I think what Rangers, well, Celtic in particular now, it's hard to talk about Celtic and Rangers because Rangers <laughs> in Europe has been a very hard story the last few years. But certainly I've always argued that having a more competitive league would actually help those clubs perform better in Europe. Uh, and that's where I think the benefit would be for them. So I'm all for a very competitive Scottish league. I think that Celtic would benefit from that greatly, having harder competition and being more battle-hardened in terms of European games. So I think there's benefits all the way, and I think you know, a higher tide will, will raise all boats. In terms of Rangers, they've released their accounts this week. Some fans have been quite concerned about the numbers associated with that. They did report a core record revenue of £88.3 million, but a net loss of £17.2 million. Does that signify the challenges ahead for Rangers with, with that net loss that they've made? Well, the challenges, they're not new challenges. So the, the, thing, about, uh, the thing about Rangers is you've got incredible um, match day revenue uh, of 40. They had 40 million in 23, 44 million last season, which... You know, we talked just earlier about Crystal Palace's match day is 12 million quid. So Rangers are doing four times almost what um, some of the London teams, the smaller London teams are doing on match day. So 43 million is is a really very, very significant um, chunk of revenue. Um, and then laid on top of that, they have Cham Champions League last season, and this season they've got the Europa. Um, and so from those two elements, they they do quite well. The problems start to kick in, uh, one in respect of domestic broadcast, which is almost worthless. Um, it's about £6 million versus uh, domestic English revenue of about £150 million minimums. So, you know, just worlds apart, um, no, no English Premier League team did less than their total revenue uh, for last season. So that just shows the scale of the challenge that, that Rangers have got compared to uh, Premier League. That They're actually more akin to a large, um, a large championship team from a revenue perspective. So... They're sort of the they would they would be just top of the EFL um, revenue list at, at eighty eight million, um, but of course a lot of those teams um, that are that are at the top end of the EFL are only there revenue wise because of the uh, parachute payments that come out of the Premier League. Um, but the other big issue that they've got, of course, is their wage bill. Um, and their wage bill uh, runs around 60, 65 million quid. Um, and clearly, that's a very big chunk uh, of their total revenue. So before you start to pay for any of the other operating costs of the, of the company, you're talking about having 75% go out the door straight away on, wage, on wages. Um, and, you know, that's an issue. It means their total operating expenses for the year were 110 million quid um, on revenue of 88. So clearly the club is is loss making every year. But it, it's just very hard to see that the, the concern that, that you've got on Rangers is you've got exceptional match day revenue. You've got actually quite a, a decent revenue stream from UEFA prize money. If you can either qualify for the Champions League, which is fantastic, you get between 40, 50 million quid as Celtic will get this season. Or you can get 20 million if you get to the last stages of the, of the Europa. Or you can get, let's say, 25 million if you effectively just lose every group game in the, in the, um, in the Champions League. So you've got a good revenue stream coming from UEFA prize money, but you've got almost nothing coming from domestic broadcast. And you've got fairly modest commercial um, agreements. Um, and you've got a wage bill that, that is commensurate with 
you know, a, a European qualifying team. Um, and, um, you know, it's hard to see how it changes mm. materially. You know, there's not a lot they can do on on uh, other operating costs. If you've got 43 million of match day, you've got some pretty substantial costs on the stadium side and on the operating costs of the club. Your wage bill is your wage bill. And if you want to compete with Celtic, you're going to need a wage bill of around about 60 million quid. And so you, you, that, that, they're, they're a little bit stuck at the moment. Hmm. In terms of cash in the bank, Rangers only have £1.7 million at the moment, while Celtic have £77.2 million. How significant is that? Does that, does that show the, the big financial gap that's developed? Not, not really. I, w I, w I wouldn't focus too much on that because really it's just a snapshot as a, the balance sheet date. So what well, you don't know, I mean, the following day, somebody could have put 15 million quid into the club, for example. I'm not saying they did, but all, all that cash number is on the balance sheet is as at 30th of June, what was the total cash in the company? So it may have been that the day before it was 35 million quid and somebody, you know, and, and somebody took some money out the day before. Although you would see that in the account, so it's probably the other way around. But it's just a snapshot. I, I wouldn't, if you if you were to look at a snapshot of all of the Premier League teams, they'll have a wide variety of cash on the balance sheet date. It, it's not really that indicative of, of very much. But but clearly they've got. There's no no question the Rangers have got financial challenges because they're operating at a, a loss every single season, as so many football clubs are. Um, but pretty substantial losses, you know, so it needs the owners to be putting money in to keep the whole thing ticking over. And, you know, whilst you're reliant on people putting money in, you're, you're vulnerable. 